In this video, I'm going to be doing an updated long-term review on the Keychron K2 mechanical keyboard. I've had this keyboard for almost three years right now, and I'm going to be talking a lot about my experiences with using this keyboard, things I liked about it, and also things to be aware about if you consider buying this keyboard. So with that said, let's get right into the video. Now for some context, here are the specs for the Kcron K2 that I have. I actually have two keyboards. The first one has the red switches. It's hot swappable as the Gateron Reds. Uh, it's plastic chassis and RGB backlit. For the brown switches keyboard, it's uh, hot swappable Gateron Browns, plastic chassis, but no RGB. Instead, it's using a white backlit. I believe there are many variations of the Kcron K2 models. Uh, there are, the ones I have have the white keys, a mixture of white and black keys. So make sure uh, you keep that in mind because the ones that just have all gray keys are not hot swappable. And that basically makes the keyboard, the whole experience a lot different. This keyboard is available for purchase on various locations uh, such as Amazon and of course the Keychron website itself. I'll leave links down in the description below for you guys if you're interested. So now just an overview of the keyboard in general. Even though it's a plastic chassis, the overall build feels really high quality. There's basically no flex at all, and it feels surprisingly sturdy. Now looking back, I do wish I got the aluminum chassis version for just $10 more. I, th I would imagine that would feel even more sturdy, more high quality, but I'll get into that later on in the video. Okay, so now I'll just go over a brief uh, description of the contents of the keyboard. Uh, here's just a brief clip of the unboxing I did of this keyboard three years ago. Uh, yeah, we have the reference sheet uh, right out of the box. So yeah, the one the model I have in this clip is the the red switch model. Uh, yeah, along with that, it does come with extra accessories. Uh, of course, we have the key the braided cable, I s and then the metal keycap puller and the windows keycaps by default comes with the macbook the mac keycaps and we have the metal switch puller so yeah that's just an overview of the things it comes with okay so now i'll be talking about my overall experience with using this keyboard as well as the main advantages and disadvantages so to start off with the advantages i would say the biggest two are that it's the 75 percent layout and that the switches and stabilizers come prelude. So about the layout, it's 75%, so not a full-size keyboard. I've always thought that 60% was too small for me, and then TKL was too large. Like, I didn't really like a keyboard that was that big. So 75% seemed like the perfect sweet spot in between. It's compact enough, but it still has the necessary features and the keys, the function keys, uh, which I really need uh, in my workflow. And moreover, on the compact part, I liked how all the keys are just uniformly just together, uh, not just like spaced out like you would see on a TKL. I know some of you guys might ask about the shift, the right shift bar, which is slightly shorter on a 75% key keyboard layout. Um, I personally don't think you need to worry about it because uh, in my experience, uh, I've gotten pretty used to it pretty quickly. If, if I haven't had any trouble using it, like I haven't hit accidentally hit the arrow keys or something like that so i don't really think the shift key being shorter is an issue to worry about so that's my take on the 75 percent layout uh, now it's time to talk about the switches which is another highlight of this keyboard they come pre-lubed and i think that's really nice uh, a lot of keyboards don't really do this and you often have to just lube them yourselves which is a pretty annoying hassle so the switches are from gatarong there are three options you could pick from Gateron Reds, Browns, and Blue switches. I have the red and brown model. I think they sound nice, especially since they're pre-lubed. The lubing does make a difference for the Gateron switches. The Keychron keyboard I have right now, which has the pre-lubed red switches, sound a lot better than another keyboard I have, which the Gateron Reds are not pre-lubed. Here's a sound comparison.
so as you've heard from the comparison the non-loop switches uh, from the other keyboard I had sounded more hollow uh, a lot more sound coming a lot louder than the Keychron K2 which sounds more smoother so just a little more uh, bonuses some nice things that this keyboard comes with but not as significant as the two things I've discussed earlier is that it's really customizable, especially if you get the hot swappable version. Uh, it's pretty easy to remove keycaps uh, and remove the switches. It comes with pretty nice tools as well, uh, pretty high quality. Uh, so you don't have to worry about damaging the keycaps or anything like that. Uh, so also if you do get the RGB version, I think the RGB looks really nice. There's a bunch of effects you can choose and customize. And I, I like the RGB. I think it shines through really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about some of the biggest disadvantages of this keyboard. So, the biggest complaint I have is mainly the USB-C port. The USB-C port is on the side, so that means you have to use a 90 degree angle uh, USB-C port, or otherwise it will look awkward. And also the port is kind of small, so some USB-C ports that are right angled might not even fit. I tried a few that are too large, and it essentially forces you to kind of attach yourself to the included USB-C cable, which isn't the best quality. Apparently it's all sort of broke a little bit. Yeah, the wires are kind of getting, getting exposed on this one. So just keep in mind to take good care of the USB-C cable that it comes with um, as it's pretty hard to find replacements online. And overall, I would much rather prefer the USB-C port to be on the front rather than on the side. So that just gives you more uh, options to customize. Another thing to keep in mind that even though this keyboard is wireless, it is Bluetooth. So I wouldn't recommend using your this keyboard wireless when you're gaming because there will be some input lag. Um, in terms of typing and just web browsing, I think the Bluetooth is fine. Um, no issues there. But then again, if you're doing gaming, or I would recommend keeping this keyboard plugged in. And finally, last thing I'll talk about is the keycaps and the overall hot swap ability. So the keycaps are ABS, as I mentioned before, which is a downside. I would much rather prefer it to be PBT, uh, but even though it's ABS, it's still high quality ABS in my opinion. I haven't seen the nasty grime yet, or it's not as prominent as some of the other ABS keyboards I've had. But one thing I will say that if you plan on switching out the keycaps and the switches, you'll, you will have to relube the stabilizers because I've tried some switching out the spacebar especially. Uh, it doesn't sound as fresh as the stock version. All right, so here are my final thoughts about this keyboard. So overall, really amazing keyboard for the price. It usually hovers around 90 to 110 bucks. Uh, I got it on sale for 80 bucks, so keep a lookout on the pricing. Uh, for the hot swappable version, just keep in mind that you'll have to relube everything uh, so if you replace the keycaps and switches, you'll have to re-lube the switches, of course, and the stabilizers. Um, otherwise, if you don't like modding, if you don't want to go through that hassle, uh, just get the non-hot swap version. I think this keyboard, the main advantages that it comes with is that it sounds really good out of the box, so there's not much need for modding. And I would recommend getting the aluminum case model just for better build quality if it only costs like 10 bucks more. And yeah, take good care of the cable that comes with because the USB-C port is kind of in a weird position and there's not much replacements. So yeah, do keep that in mind. But yeah, that's pretty much my long-term review of the Kcron K2 V2 keyboard. Like and subscribe and see you guys in the next one.